Frag Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, baby, for another episode of a Frag Tag Radio. And here with you today are your boys, Pradius. And Jay Ray. Matter of fact. The boy Death from Above. And uh, introducing a little guest that we've got with us today. Uh, KJ, what's up? Welcome. What's going on? KJ. KJ. Um, so, before we uh, go into a further introduction, uh, first we got to get those plugs out there. And Jay Ray is wonderful at those, so he's just going <laughs> to run through the apps. <laughs> So, uh, go ahead. We are on the big one, Appy Gamer. Good one for, by Mobiles Republic, uh, World of Video said. Game News, <laughs> Game RSS. All those are on Android. Uh, you know, download them, all great apps. Some of them give you all the feeds from different video games from around the world. And also Game On, which is now on iOS and Windows Phone. How about that? How um, about it? Well, so, check out Game On on iOS. Uh, I've had it on my Windows phone for a while, and it's a spectacular app, and one of the only options on uh, Windows phone if you're looking for a decent app. Yeah. Um, also, Xbox One News and Xbox Game News are a couple more Android apps if you just can't get enough. You just can't get enough. <laughs> They're there. Yes, they are. So, um, you know, download them. We're also available on Twitter, fragtagradio.com, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and TuneIn Radio. So, just it's all up. over the place. You know, go ahead and tweet to us. Tweet, tweet, tweet at Fragtag Radio. And then uh, hit, it, hit us up on YouTube. Comment on those videos. Subscribe. Please. Yeah, hit us subscribe. <laughs> and then speaking of subscribing, we got that uh, Grand Theft Auto Five Care Package giveaway. I know we've been talking about it for a couple months. You know, we finally got it up on the site. So, uh, all you got to do is... Um, Go go there, comment on the article, and uh, there's links there where you can follow us on Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube. After you have followed, subscribed, and commented, you will be automatically entered to have your name balled up and put into the FTR Trucker, Trucker Hat of Justice, justice. <laughs> where you possibly could be drawn and be the lucky winner of the Grand Theft Auto V Care Package, which includes a retail copy of Grand Theft Auto V for Xbox 360, of course, Collector's Edition Blueprint Map of San Andreas game add-on voucher with DLC code for the Atomic Blimp, a Grand Theft Auto V Bug Stars keychain, a Brands of Grand Theft Auto V sticker pack, a Grand Theft Auto V logo decal sticker, and that GTA V Platinum Power Magnet. That alone right there is worth for worth, 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 yeah. I mean, come on, that thing's insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. With all that out of the way, uh, yeah, uh, KJ here with us, uh, good buddy of uh, Matter of Facts. So, from what I hear, you're a retro gamer like Matt. Absolutely. Uh, you do you do mostly. Uh, so, uh, what have you been playing recently? Well, actually, I've been taking a break from the retro, and I've been playing a lot of uh, Minecraft PC. <laughs> a lot of years about it almost every day. Every day. <laughs> I got raided. Yeah. I got raided. I'm getting raided a lot. Um, for that, though... Uh, some Donkey Kong Country 2, um, playing a little bit classics, of, uh, classics. yeah, Super Mario World, Mario All-Stars, stuff like that. You are playing, uh, Pikmin for a little while, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, Pikmin, yeah. the GameCube, I was playing that quite a bit. Yeah, I heard you also just came into possession of Goldeneye as well. I Ooh. did, I did, that was as of yesterday. Yes, it was. <laughs> and I started playing and I forgot how hard it was. <laughs> it's one of those games that when you play it as a kid, it's great. Yeah. 15, 16 years later, you play it. You're like, oh, man, oh. these controls are so much different. Where's They're better off left as memories. Yeah. <laughs> Still yeah. a classic. Still yeah, it. it's great. Still a classic. All right, and then, so, of course, uh, without going into any details since it's in beta form, you played the uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and uh, without talking about the game specifically, I hear that uh, it wasn't that great, or isn't that great. No. Uh, I was 
I was disappointed. I liked it for what it was. It was a beta. There was expected to be some problems. <clears throat> but overall, graphics were great. Right. Um, the gameplay itself was awesome. It kind of gave me like a WoW feel. Mm. But I liked it a lot better than WoW. I don't know. WoW's really colorful. Kinda, yeah. Kind of cartoony. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. is. This is more down to earth, realistic. Uh, we've had we, we've yeah. had a few WoW fans come and go throughout yes, the history yeah. of our show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, all right. So uh, awesome. And uh, with that, uh, J Ray is going to go ahead and hit up with that PS4 coverage. Ooh. So uh, let us know about the console. What's good with that? It's uh, what's that new? What's that new XMB <laughs> looking like? It's a, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a sweet system. I, I, I like it. It's uh, definitely a step up. As far as the OS is concerned, I wrote an article comparing the two on FragTagRadio.com. So check you can that check out. that out if uh, you want specific details on what I do like and, and not like about the consoles itself, uh, OS specific. But um, as far as, I mean, it's really, really, really fast. It, okay. Everything moves so daggone quick through the, through the you know, apps the various apps and games i mean it just happens there's very little wait time if any <clears throat> another uh another thing that i got a chance to check out is the new playstation app and uh they definitely <clears throat> they definitely did a good job with that it's uh pretty much smart glass it's it, it's smart glass and playstation form do, does all the same stuff as the new xbox one smart glass as far as you can load your apps you can get into uh matchmaking from the game which is one of the cooler uh features of it you know you can send messages whatnot one of the things i don't like about the playstation 4 is the headset that it comes with the earbud is i like earbuds but this earbud is really big and it doesn't fit in your ear and there's no padding whatsoever over it so it's mm. really hard and uncomfortable yeah. to wear for a while for a, a extended period of time now one of the things that a lot of people might not know about the playstation 4 that uh, through my messing around and tinkering with it, I've figured out is you can use any any headset oh, wow. plugged into the controller. Nice. Like I had my Beats by Dre headphones plugged into yeah. the controller, and they have the mic yeah. for the phone, and you can use that. Nice, which is sick. Nice. You know, that's one of the things that I, a lot of people don't probably don't know about, but that's a big time feature in my opinion because that earbud sucks. It absolutely sucks. Yeah. Now, obviously, you can't use a Microsoft Xbox 360 headset because that's not a three prong port. Yeah, you know that's a that's a, a dedicated port. But um, you know that that that's a great feature. Another feature a lot of people might not know about is you do not have to have the camera to give it voice commands. Oh. Now, voice commands on the PlayStation 4 are very limited, but if you have a headset plugged in, you can give it voice commands through that. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I thought was really weird because I had the headset plugged in and I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh, I think I was talking to my roommate and I was like, yeah, uh, if, if this was Xbox, you could just say PlayStation off or something like that. Or I, I don't remember exactly what I said and it did it. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> what the hell? I was like, we don't have a camera. How did that work? And it took me a while to figure out that it was actually coming through the headset because I didn't have the headset on. I had it sitting on the bed next to me. Oh, right. Okay. But, uh, you know, so that's another feature people might not know about. Uh, the, the OS, the dashboard itself, is the XMB, but now it's just small logos similar to the PlayStation, but when you go down, it gives you a whole variety, an array of options. Uh, there's actually Party Chat, which they're way behind the game when it comes to that, but at least they have it now. Yeah. Um, Better late than never. True. That's right. That's right. Um, one of the things that's, that's also nice is they give you a free month of Curio City. Um, or curiosity, however you want to say it, they're, they're streaming unlimited. Mu mu I guess now it's video and music unlimited, not oh. curiosity, but, uh, they give you a free month of that. And I thought that was a good deal. You know, um, you can get a 30 day trial of Xbox music too, if you haven't already redeemed that, but I redeemed that back on 360. So, uh, they also give you a year of PlayStation plus, Oh wow. which nice. is a nice thing to have with that, yeah. you know? So, um, you know, the system, I, I love it. Uh, the the Dual Shock is a vast improvement over the last one. Is it? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's different things that like has the touch the touchpad on it, which some not really something I would use a whole lot, but you'd be surprised because there's certain things it does work well for, like in Assassin's Creed Four, yeah. when you're on the map instead of using the joystick, uh, you can just swipe like you're on a phone, you I know, so, going yeah. over, and that helps web browsing whatnot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, graphically, sp talking specifically about certain games, uh, I know that Killzone is is the moneymaker for the, the big-time exclusive for them. Knack is okay. You know, uh, 
at best. It, yeah, I, I know a lot of people have kind of <laughs> ripped it. I actually kind of like it a little bit, but it does get tiresome after a couple stages because it's the same thing over and over again. There's nothing really more to do other than what you start out doing. So, um, but uh, yeah, as far as Killzone, Killzone's awesome. Uh, I've always been a pretty big Killzone fan, so I'm go I was going to like the game probably no matter what, but they've made a lot of changes to the game. Uh, that some Killzone fans might like, some might not like. They, they've definitely had, kind of like Halo 4, had, had some Call of Duty influence to it. Mm. Killzone does too. Yeah. It used to be real, the movements and stuff felt real heavy. And yeah, now yeah. It, it, it's real fast, like Call of Duty when you're running, and and that's one of the things that you'll notice as soon as you pick it up. Pick it up if you played all the other three kill zones. Um, the graphics are superb. They're they're unbelievable. This is a uh, a lot like Rise. You can tell this game was made from the ground up for next gen as yeah. far as graphics. I mean, it it looks beautiful. It's a lot more colorful than the other kill zones, and uh, there's some cool gameplay elements that they've added to it too, as far as. Uh, you have this robot that follows you named Al, and Al can do all kinds of different powers and stuff. It adds an interesting gameplay mechanic to the game. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, Killzone, uh, it's a great game. Um, you know, I don't feel like I've played it quite enough to review it, so I'm going to hold off on that. But I will say that if you have a PlayStation 4 and uh, you're looking for a game to get, that, that is a definite must-have. Yeah. Um, the other two games I played for PlayStation 4 that kind of relate to Xbox Three or Xbox One and PlayStation 4 because they're, they're multi-platform games is FIFA and NBA 2K14. And uh, FIFA is one in particular that it's running on a completely different engine on next gen than it's running on current gen. Something that it's running on the new Ignite engine. And if you just pick up the game for a couple seconds, you're going to say, oh, this looks exactly like current gen. Yeah. But after playing it for about five or ten minutes, you'll start to realize that it feels a whole lot different. Everything looks and moves a lot better. Um, the player animations are... Yeah. It, it seems like there's hundreds and hundreds more animations in it. Um, the crowd looks a lot better. Everything looks a lot better, but it's not something that you would just be able to glance at and say, oh, God, this is PS4 and this is PS3, yeah. comparing them. But it, you actually have to spend a little bit of time with it. But uh, now, is it enough of a difference to justify, you know, if you if, say if you just have a PS3 and all you have it for is FIFA, mm -hmm. should you buy a PlayStation 4 and get FIFA? Maybe not now, no. you know. But and if you're in the UK and getting an Xbox One, you'll get it for free any damn that, way. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And I will say though, it's noticeable, and, and I was pretty happy with it being a big time FIFA player. Yeah. Um, now NBA 2K14 is a, is a little bit different. <laughs> NBA 2K14 looks a lot better on next gen. I mean, oranges to apples type deal. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty impressive the way that they were able to scale the game up to next gen when so many other games like Call of Duty couldn't quite figure that out. Yeah. So, um. I was very impressed with that. Gameplay-wise, though, it's the same game. It feels the same. It plays the same. But graphically, there's quite a bit of a, a leap there. Um, you know, if you had those two side-by-side, side, you would definitely be able to tell which one is which. So, yeah. uh, you know, 2K Games does a hell of a job with uh, with the NBA series. And, and uh, you know, obviously they're not going to have much competition for a while because I heard NBA Live 14 is just a disaster. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a freaking disaster i think he got a four threes even on certain places Dang. it's an absolute disaster and it's kind of funny because they spent all this time reinventing the franchise yeah, like and, four years right yeah that's what i say they were yeah they, were <laughs> they should be they, they should be putting out a blockbuster oh god yeah. i mean from everything i hear the gameplay is actually kind of fun but it's got to be the worst looking game oh really and uh there's just a lot of problems with it but you know i haven't played that so i can't really speak for myself but you know just judging by what i've read on it it's something that isn't going to compete with nba 2k14 anytime soon so all in all the playstation 4 uh it's a great console i like it a lot um you know it's hard to compare the xbox one and the playstation 4 right now because there's just not enough features uh available for both consoles uh you know but down the road we'll be able to get more into that but you know, my favorite feature right now that is not available on Xbox One is the live streaming. And we all know that's coming for Xbox One. But it definitely works really, really well. Yeah. And it's it's fun. 
I think uh, weren't you and me talking about that the other day? Yeah. Did you hear about how people are using the playroom? Yeah. On, on Twitch to like like having like sex and shit on yeah, camera well, yeah, and like it. rolling up blunts and whatnot and yeah. streaming it live on Twitch. Supposedly, yeah. supposedly now they are going to ban the playroom from a stream. From yeah, a stream I was right about this. Uh, so because see that game uses the camera to show you. Yeah. Which is kind of a funny issue there, but um. Yeah, I mean, the live streaming, it works really, really well. You can set people to have comments during your game while you're playing, do picture in picture. It's, it's really neat. You can do Twitch or Ustream. Uh, stream either one you want. And uh, I think it would be cool if they have it to where you can stream to both simultaneously. That's one of the things I'd like to see them do in the future. But, uh, you know, um, that's about it. You know, as far as the PlayStation 4, we'll, we'll get back to that later when more features are available. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean it's still new. But you're satisfied. Very satisfied. I, I think it, I think they did a good job with it. Nice. For sure. All right. And then uh, <coughs> rolling straight on in to uh, to Xbox One. Um, I would say um, I, I've, I've been liking it a lot so far. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I love it. I picked mine up at midnight launch and I already had a spot cleared out for it and uh, hooked it up and... Uh, you know, immediately there's a lot of things uh, that I do like about it. Uh, one uh, being uh, the new uh, interface, which is a lot like uh, the Metro on uh, Windows 8. It's uh, really nice. Uh, easy to navigate, especially when you're using your voice, getting around. Um, yeah, that's to me, is one of the most impressive things about it is... Uh... You know, just your voice, how, how it, it does a lot better reading your voice in the previous Connect, yeah. And, uh, you know, just you, it makes you not want to use a controller where the other Connect made you appreciate a controller. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can tell that this one was definitely made to use with the, um, with the Connect. It was like built for Connect. Like if you don't have your Connect hooked up to it, you're losing out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's best to have that Connect hooked up and use your voice to navigate throughout your, your console. Right now, now P, have you, have any of you guys actually tried out the, uh, the, the, the motion with your hand? No, I'm trying. See, to... I did, and I, I did it by accident. Really, I had my hand like scratching up, and it picked up my hand. I saw the old, just like the little hand that used to go around the screen, just like the old Xbox. Right. So I started, you know, just, just... trying to play around with that, yeah. and I'm like holding it over, and it doesn't work. But now you actually push your palm in to select things, uh -huh. and you can make the screen smaller by grabbing the ends and going like that, or grabbing uh -huh. it and making it bigger. I uh -huh. saw it doing that whenever an achievement pops right. up. Right. It's right. like to open the achievement. Yeah, you it's, go like that. It works then, the same way yeah. with the home screen and stuff. Is it better than using your voice or a controller? No, still not. But yeah. it just it's kind of a cool way to show how the Connect is. Yeah, I, yeah. Just going like that to make the screen smaller is, is a neat thing. It's yeah. a cool feature. Yeah, it really. is. Right. Yeah. I also yeah. like the fact that when you had to like navigate through the screen, if you had like an elongated screen where you could move to the side, you just grab, you like literally stick yeah. your hand out and like you grab it and you moving it to the side like yeah, you're holding yeah. it to like turn a page. That's, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it's the same. I, I yeah, that. just kind of grow, grab your fist and go like that, yeah, and it moves it through, and, and that's cool. Pretty neat, but you know, I definitely agree with you that the voice is is pretty impressive on that. You yeah, know. and uh, I mean, it works for for just about everything. I mean, there's a few commands that they still need to add in there, but I mean, there's there's a ton of a ton of stuff in there. Well, one of the commands I don't get is Xbox on turns your console on and by the way you can set it to turn your tv and your cable box on when you do right. that yeah. but then you can't say xbox off you have yeah, to say yeah. xbox turn off, turn off oh, which is yeah. a weird kind yeah. of quirk in there you know so yeah well I, i'm guessing i'm guessing it's because when the xbox is on it's listening for a whole bunch of other voice commands so yeah. turn off makes it specific so it doesn't accidentally turn your shit off when Some you don't want it to lights off whereas when yeah. the console is off the yeah. only voice command it's listening for is Xbox on. I guess you know. I just think that's kind of weird, you know. Yeah, but also with it, when you when you tell it to turn off, you don't have to worry about it accidentally, you know, just picking it up because it confirms. Oh, are you sure you want to turn off the Xbox? Yeah. yeah. Then you say yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, the, then uh, a couple other things I noticed with the voice commands is like you cannot say. Uh, Xbox play Assassin's Creed. You have to say Xbox play Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, it's be specific. Which, yeah, yeah. And, and that's fine. But yeah. it would be nice in the future if they add, you know, yeah, kind of 
streamline it. You know, yeah. yeah, like instead, so I can say Xbox Play Dead Rising instead of Xbox Play Dead Rising Three. Because yeah. once you start getting into long game names or something, that's yeah. going to be a pain in the ass. Well, if yeah, you try to pick up one of the old ones, like you play Dead Rising the True. first one, True. instead of the third one. Which that, meant, yeah, that, that that's a good point. Um, you know, definitely with games that there's multiple games on that console you'd probably have to do that especially like uh with killer instinct yeah you've got two killer instinct and killer instinct classic so it definitely helps like you know when I, if you just say killer instinct it's going to bring up the regular right. killer instinct but if you want to play the retro you have to say killer instinct classic right that's understandable for games that's actually downloaded onto the hard drive yeah but like for like i think it should just be play disc and it should just start the disc you don't have to worry about the names now you have one command for anything that any game or disc that you put in the in the, um in the console can you can't you do that? Can you not do that? Can you, uh, I, I don't so know. I haven't tried it. I think you can actually I'll, say yeah, play disc. Yeah, Xbox play disc. I think oh. you can do that. I, I think uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I think you can because uh, I believe it gave me that option one time, or I saw the option when I said Xbox Select, which is a, another tip. If you don't know what to say, just say Xbox Select, and it'll bring up all the options of what you can and cannot oh. say. Yeah. Pl uh, plus, they also have a free app you can download on there that'll uh, the tutorial app that'll walk you through all the voice commands. Oh. Yeah. Also, another thing that I, like the console did was like when you um, hooked up the, when I hooked up my TV to it and I went through the settings, it gives you the option to calibrate your TV. Yeah. Because you know some people just start their TV out the box, whatever settings it is, never really knew or know about having their system calibrated. But you just tell the Xbox to do it, and it just... What, it, it adjusts easily. your TV to, uh, yep. to optimal, optimal game settings? settings. So like TV, and then it just goes through it. Or, like, all you do is just push it, basically press next, 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 and it's telling Where is you, that at? And it's like, whole list in your settings. Where is that you go, you go, You go to your settings, you go to your, um, the settings in um, games and app, Yeah. and then you go through, um, there's a one that says... Um, I think TV, and then you go to it, and it'll say calibrate TV. It'll say calibrate HD TV. Huh. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. But uh, which brings me into another one of the things that I think is, is really awesome is the TV integration. How uh, you can just plug your cable box right up into that puppy, and you turn it on, you select uh, what type of cable box you have, the maker of the box, and then it'll go through and ask you what type of TV you have. You select the maker of the TV, and then it you know automatically syncs up with both of those things. And uh, whenever you say Xbox on, if the TV's not already on, it'll turn on the TV and the cable box with it, you know, so you don't got to turn everything on yeah. and off separately. It's that's definitely that's an really awesome, nice. awesome, uh, you know, thing for me, too, because I watch a lot of shows and TV and stuff, so I, I've been using it religiously. Uh, one of the things that can be a pain in the ass, though, is if you, you're like me and you have it hooked up to turn your TV on and your cable box off, I've messed up a few times and turned my TV or my cable box off or on, I'll turn my TV on before I say Xbox yeah. on, and I'll say I'll turn my TV on, say Xbox on, then I'll turn my cable box and the Xbox on and my TV off, and I'm like shit. I don't <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll old habits die hard. Yeah. 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 Right, well, so then you got to sync it all back up again, kind of, you know, get everything turned off at once. But yeah, I had a similar thing where the wife wanted to go watch the TV, and she's like, "How do I go with the TV?" I was like, "Everything's through the Xbox." She's like, "Oh, that's stupid." And I was like, all right, just say turn Xbox on. She turned it on, and I said, go to TV. So she said, go to TV, and then she was like, oh, that's hot. I like this. I like this. I don't, I don't need to use a remote no more. I like this. I was like, yeah, you like it now, huh? Yeah, and uh, you, you could even just change the channel with your voice. You know, it'd be like Xbox, watch Cartoon Network, and then it goes right there. Yeah. Now, that that's part, for whatever that's reason, that's I've had some second. issues with. If I, if I say Xbox One guy and then say go to Fox or ESPN, it does it right away. Oh. But if I'm just watching the TV without bringing up the one guide, I cannot get it to go to a channel. Really? really? I mean, I, it does, but it always goes to the wrong channel. Like, I'll say Xbox, oh. go to ESPN. It'll bring up sci-fi. Now, oh. I did have one problem at first, but after I did it a few times, I guess it, like, realized that... Uh, Maybe his, so. Um, I, was I, I was trying to go to Cartoon Network, and it brought me to the Food Network. Yeah, but um, after after going to the Cartoon Network like twenty thousand times, now it never goes. It just it, it never recognizes. Yeah, like, yeah. Because um, maybe it, that's what it is. Because but when I bring up the one guy, it works to perfection. But if that one guy is not up, it does not time. work for me. And uh, another bad thing that I didn't care about is like it only has selected channels. It doesn't have all the channels in the database. So if you have like um, the rainbow package at every channel, so let's say you want to go to HBO two. And you say Xbox go to HBO, it'll I mean go to HBO too. It'll only go to the regular HBO. Right, it doesn't right, recognize yeah. HBO too. 
Now I got a I got a uh, a question for everybody here that I've been wondering about, and this is a, a, a issue that I've been having, and uh, it's actually a hardware issue. Hmm. The new battery pack in the back of the controllers is no longer a pack; they're inside the controller. Right. Okay. Well, if when you play Dead Rising three, to get away from grapples from zombies, you, you have to shake, shake your controller. The controller yeah. Oh, okay. The batteries are not locked down in the back of my controller, so okay. e- I've, even if I just barely shake my controller, the batteries this. slide in the back yeah. of the controller and it loses power. I noticed that yesterday when we were switching out batteries in the controller. And it, it's happened like a hundred times to the point where it's starting to piss me off. It, yeah. So what I did is I took a little piece of toilet paper tissue <laughs> and put it on top so that they can't slide. Now it's fine. Oh, but God. my problem is you shouldn't have to put toilet paper. Rig it up. For real. And I will. Well, uh, well I, I will say I played the first, I think, three chapters of Dead Rising and did a lot of shaking and it didn't happen to me. Yeah. I, I mean, it's happening religiously. And it's not... I mean, it, they're only sliding that much. Just enough to lose contact. Just enough to lose contact. Yeah. And the yeah. controller turns off, and I can turn it right back on. Yeah. But it's like, well, damn. One of, one of the things I did was when I first initially picked up my controllers before picking up the console, I didn't know how good the battery life on the controllers was going to be. So, you so got I went and, and I purchased the, the, the plug um, and Energizer I've... battery packs oh. for oh. the Xbox Ones. Yeah, you got to I don't have that issue. It's yeah. Just, I, I can charge my batteries, just set it on the on the stand. I, I ordered uh, two of those from Amazon, one for me and one for Solomon. I just got to wait for them to get See, it. I'm thinking that'll fix it because I don't want to have uh, batteries in there sliding around. But it's just an issue that I'm not sure, you know, because when you – I actually look – I thought something might have been broken, my controller, which I, it's brand new, so how could that have happened? But I looked at it, and it's not – there's nothing broke. It locks in fine. It's just there is a – very little bit of space between the top of the battery thing and and where the battery is and the batteries don't lock into place well at all Mm -hmm. so they can slide just ever so slightly and that's that's what causes it uh and then so while we're on the subject of the new controller um i love the new thumbsticks yeah Uh, amen the way that they're they're a little bit taller and uh they're also a little bit a little bit thinner they're not quite as wide Mm -hmm. and uh uh, the, the grip that goes around the outsides. The new the new thumbsticks are, are a vast improvement. They are. They uh, are. The, the new D pad is is a, is a gazillion times better. It definitely <clears throat> is. It's got a clicking feeling to it, yeah. which I like. If you feel like you're inputting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the new triggers I like a lot better. You, you I I like them, but they they take a while to get used to. Yeah, yeah because they're. Uh, they're 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 not not as hard to press in yeah. as as the 360 yeah, ones they were. Don't feel, they're not as long of a push either, you know. Yeah, and, right. It's yeah, like a little minute click. Yeah, yes. and I, I wonder how that will work with games like uh, racing games where it's a gas, and you know sometimes you want to pull the gas slightly down. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I haven't, I haven't tried I was that playing much. Forza. Yeah, and when you go around those corners, you you know let off the gas, hit mm, the right, brake, right, and that's then ease I'm... into it. And the way I did with you know Forza Four is I it was, sounds silly, but I gripped. The control a little bit harder, just enough so that when I eased in on the gas, it would slowly go in. And I did the same thing, and it oh, worked. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. It one of the good. things that's neat is uh, in a, the rumble inside the triggers. Well, I was going to get to that too, but this, if you don't want to use the actual trigger mechanism, mm-hmm. you can actually slide your finger slightly up, and they're basically just buttons. Oh yeah. On the outside, the way they're around it, yeah. You know, they're they're just like the bumper buttons. So mm-hmm. if you don't want to use the triggers, you don't have to, and that yeah. that's a cool feature. That is, yeah. Um, and then so also speaking of uh the the new bumper buttons, um, I like them. I have heard some people complain that they're a little bit taller than the three hundred and sixty, uh, bumper buttons, and therefore harder to reach. I guess for people with smaller hands. Um, you know, I I haven't had that issue, but I have heard you know a couple people people say that. Um, obviously, the, the the A, B, X, and Y buttons are pretty much the same. the The new guide button is really awesome. I like how it lights up now, um, and it's flat rather than kind of like rounded, out, rounded. Yeah. like the three sixty one was. I like how it's just flat. And uh, the select or the back and start buttons are now the view and menu, yeah. That's which kind of mm-hmm. confusing to me. So like yeah. the menu button, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah like. <laughs> that that takes a little getting used to, but uh, after you get used to it, not a problem. Uh, yeah. Overall, uh, I, I like the, I like the new controller a lot. I think it's a, I think it's a big improvement, especially now that it doesn't have uh, a small thing is is how it doesn't have those holes in the back of the controller where the screws go in. Oh, yeah. Like my pinkies would be 
uh, right on top of those those screw holes uh, at the bottom of the controller on 360. Get some yeah, and after like <laughs> after like hours of playing, you you pull your pinkies down and they've got like just raw. Yeah, I'm like, damn. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's a, it's a small change that makes a big difference. difference yeah. Um, but yeah, so definitely glad that they that they got rid of those uh, those screw holes. New headset. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit big improvement too. It is, and the only I do have one small gripe about it, and I think the padding can be a little bit thicker. Yeah. Other than that, it sounds better. It you can tell it's better made. It, it it's comfortable to wear, except for when I wear it for a while, you can start feeling your ear oh. through the padding, and you can start feeling the hard part because it's, it's rounded, yeah. but the padding is super super thick, and the padding was really really thick. I mean, super, super thin, and yeah. the padding was really thick on the Xbox one. Yeah. And you can tell it's a lot better made than the 360 one. But I just, I'm hoping that maybe the next, the next ones they bring out are a little bit thicker in padding. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, luckily I haven't had that problem yet. But and I've used the headset a lot. Matter of fact, I pretty much play with it on even when I'm not talking to somebody. <laughs> just, just, just so if someone does send me a chat, I don't have to reach over and grab it and plug it in and do all that type of stuff. <laughs> but uh but yeah um let's see other features of the new dashboard um uh, switching between games is uh is is really cool and switching between apps yeah. um i do think that they need to make it more, more things snappable like uh the achievements need to needs to be snappable skype yeah. needs to be snappable and uh your friends list needs to be snappable yeah because i mean you know one one the one of the things i do miss or did miss at, at first is is the xbox guide from 360 where you hit the guy button and the little thing comes up with the blades and you can do what you yeah. want yeah. from there view your friends list without getting out of the game well as it is now since you can't snap your friends list if you want to go look at your friends you have to well, you know kind of get out of the game not not you know if you go not physically but you're moving from a game to an app and then back and forth so I just think it would be it's going to be a, a lot better when they finally make it so that you can just snap for your friends list to the right side of the screen. Now, can't you just say Xbox Snap Activity and then it'll come up and say friends? It show you the, it shows you the feed of um, right. basically the activity of what's going on, but you can't go to your actual friends or oh, something. Oh. Yeah. So uh, you know, obviously uh, that that'll be coming in the future along with being able to snap Skype. Skype <laughs> Skype is something that I think should have been there at launch, being able to snap that. Yeah. Especially um, since they push that feature so much. Yeah. What what I find it hard getting used to still is like if I'm P if I'm sending you a let's say I want to send you a chat request and then you accept it, now I have to ask and tell the Xbox, oh, turn on the chat. Yeah, and that's kinda weird because it. like <clears throat> what what, 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 what what when you join a chat, you can go to turn on chat or turn off chat. But there's also an option for a mute and, and or a mute all. So yeah. If those if those options are there, why do you need to turn chat on and off? Because if I don't want people to hear me, I can just hit mute, and if I don't want to hear the other people, I can just hit mute all. So right. it's really a minute point to even have that option there, and it's really just an extra step that you got to turn on turn on and off party chat. It should default to on, and then you turn it off if you want it off. Yeah. Um. So by the boat, and then, um. My one complaint that I have is not being able to access the hard drive yet. Um, Big time oh, yeah. complaint. That's weird. They, uh, they obviously, you know, Major Nelson said that'll be coming in an update, you know, along with a gazillion other things that'll be coming. Uh, but I just think that that, along with being able to snap Skype, those two things should have been there at launch, at least for me. Uh, you know, obviously I haven't run out of hard drive space yet, but... That being said, these new games are pretty large, with an average of thirty gig, yeah. you know, per per install with a, with a disc based game. And when you when you're doing that, after you know, ten or so games, ten to fifteen games, you're going to be running low on hard drive space. Yeah. Okay. And by the time that happens, they need to have, you know, the ready you know, right. where, where, where I can delete stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I figure out how you can delete which games you want to. Yeah. Well, instead yeah. of the, the, the console, you know, just saying, oh, you haven't played this game in a while, let me delete it. You know, so if you if you want to do that, you just go into your games and apps menu, yeah, and, and then, then you just go on the up. game, and then you hit the, the, X, the Xbox button, and right. then it'll ask you, what do you want to do with this? Like a whole list will come up, and you just say, delete this game. Right. Yeah, it, and, but the, the thing about it is you can't manage any small things in your hard drive space, and it doesn't show you no. at all like how much the size used. of it, how yeah. much it's taken up on the hard drive, and also that type of stuff. What if you've downloaded? This is what I'm wondering. What if you've downloaded several little like small pieces of DLC? Oh, you know, yeah. you can't manage that anyway. You know, it, it's I know you can manage add-ons as far as like uh, 
expansions. You just go to the game, hit the guy or hit the uh, the menu button, and it'll come up and say show add-ons, and you hit that. But um, I mean, it's just weird. You shouldn't have to go through all that to work your hard drive. Yeah. And also, it'd be nice to be able to use extra, like flash drives and stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. they're both now. Just give it time. Yeah. And all that will get ironed out. Yeah, everything will be coming in updates. So, you know, and then uh, I'm hoping and I hear that, that they're going to try and have at least, at least, you know, one more update out before Christmas Day. So hopefully some things will come with that. And then if, and if not, right, you know, right after the new year. So, uh, but oh yeah, overall, uh, the con the console itself, the hardware and the software, uh, loving it, loving it, loving it. And then uh, with that, so going on into the games, um, me and Matt have been playing a crap ton of Killer Instinct, yes. so uh, I'm gonna let Matt go ahead and roll in. I had doubts about it after playing it and doing the dojo mode for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 everything I, I I was hoping, I wish for, and I want it. And um, I mean, it's a deep fighting game, way more deeper than the originals, and it's just so much fun. Unfortunately, you know, when I tried playing ranked matches, we couldn't find anybody. Yeah, yesterday. So we just kept, you know, going against each other. But I just wish in the dojo mode, <clears throat> or they had a training mode where you could pick another character. I understand all the yeah, moves yeah. are the same. They all have openers, linkers, yeah. enders, whatever. But it's just, I mean, after doing that, like, Jay goes my character now. Like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's how you know the move. Because you know everything. I know for everything, him. yeah. Because yeah. I did the dojo, some of the dojo mode with Jay go, because that's all I had originally. Yeah. And um, oh, that, that, that's what he's saying. The only person you can do the dojo with is Jay go. Even yeah. when you have the other characters? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> so they're like, there's a... Matt, you said you, you did dojo for Pradius? Some of them, yeah. Some of the more um, challenging ones. I, I, like, my brother, he was playing, like, he didn't grow up with the original Killer Instinct like we did. So uh, he was sitting there doing the dojo, and he had trouble with one of the, <coughs> one of the um, um, skills he had to do. And I was like, all right, give me the controller, and let me do it for you, so that way you can move on. So I get the controller from him, and immediately it signed him out and signed me in. Yeah. yeah. yeah so how do, you, how do you guys go, how do you get around that? We just uh, uh, had... Well, see, uh, Matt's profile isn't on my Xbox, okay. so mm -hmm. when it when it sees his face, there's no profile to sign him in with. Oh, okay. I thought it was signed mm -hmm. in with yes. Facial recognition. Oh yeah. 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 Um, you can sign in uh, a guest, and he would be you know Prady Sex UCM one or whatever, right. Right. which uh, which is what we do when we're playing two player. But if if, if you know if he's just gonna play the dojo or a match online by himself, then we just sign the guest out, and then the only person signed in is me. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but but yeah, it is interesting because we had both we had you know me uh, and the guest signed in for Matt and uh, it recognized Matt as the guest and we wanted to go to Dojo, and so Matt sat down the controller he had and I handed him my controller, thinking that you know it would be my profile, but and it's it, the Connect saw me hand him the controller <laughs> and 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 and, and it immediately went to, went back to the menu and, yeah. and was signed in as the guest. <laughs> Yeah. So I was like, yeah, damn it, we got to sign this guest out yeah. for you to play as my profile. Yeah, so, uh, things I enjoyed about the controller, you didn't have to worry about looking for, oh, who's player one, who's player two. It's just all one player. It's going to make it a lot harder to cheat mm -hmm. games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, can't just, uh, you can't just have two people working on the same controller anymore. But uh, Killer Instincts, definitely, the graphics are crazy good. I mean, the you know, the, art, the art effects. style is really awesome. Yeah, it is. Double Helix did a really good job. They really did. I'm glad that they did justice to the name of Killer Instinct. Although I will say, when you put in Killer Instinct Classic Boy, <laughs> yeah. and you look at those graphics, <laughs> it is... Uh, I don't remember it looking that bad. <laughs> yeah. Me either. Like I, I, I remember seeing it on, on, you know, playing on 64... Uh, it, it just seems like it, it looked better. Looks better than what... You know, I mean, like, literally, like... I remember in the arcades, like... I used to spend like all day because my sister used to work at the mall. I used to go there with her during summer. Mom would be like, here's 20 bucks. Spend it. I'm like, yeah. all right. So I go to the arcade. It's Killer Instinct, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Killer Instinct. Like literally every day. And I just thought, man, this game looks so good. Ultra 64, I can't wait. <laughs> and then, like, you know, oh, Ultra 64 is Nintendo 64. We waited two years. We get Killer Instinct Gold. And. But when I was so pumped up to get the classic on there and check it out, I was like, good lord. 
Yeah. Like, it's just pixelated beyond hell. Like, <laughs> it was like bad. an Atari game up in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> and uh, forgot how hard the computer was on the real. old Killer Instinct. They will dominate you. And it's not about, like, the new Killer Instinct. You can just kind of whip in and get by with, like, throwing just random punches and kicks. You have to know your combos, read the other person's combos, break them. You have to set yourself up to perform a combo. Yeah. And this one, you kind of, the new one, I like, you can jump in. And start doing, you know, blinkers, autos, and all that. And the old one was like, well, you gotta use an opener straight up. Like, yeah. that's it. <laughs> you gotta use an opener straight up. And then, I mean, and we were playing on very easy difficulty we setting. We were. That's what surprised me. Because I thought it was like a medium or like hard. And it said yeah. very easy. I was like, wow. And that's still, and it's still a challenge. <laughs> it is. Very easy. You're like, yo, I don't even want to see what very hard is going to be yeah. like. Because uh, it started out on normal when I first booted it up. Well, I was just getting my ass whipped. And I was like, all right, all right. I'm backing this thing up to easy. And easy and very easy. And I was like, all right, well, if normal is this hard, I'm going to back it up to very easy. And backed yeah. it up to very easy, easy and was able to win some matches. But it was still a challenge. Yeah. Like, And then like Matt came over and he was playing. And he was talking about the difficulty. And I was like, well, hold on. Finish this match. Let me show you something. <laughs> so he finished up the match. We go into the menus. I show him the difficulty. I'm like, yeah, you were just playing on very easy. <laughs> like oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so forgot how difficult the old killer instinct was it's like they kept that aspect of it being an arcade game yeah like keep pumping in those quarters yep and i guess that's, that's pretty much why it was so difficult pretty much i mean all the arcades like that they right? wanted you to keep putting those quarters in yeah 50 cents but uh but yeah so uh killer instinct uh i've been loving it um uh, my main character has been orchid <laughs> uh <laughs> You know she's she's super fast and i was able to you know learn most of her combos uh still haven't uh learned the little flying knee yet you need to that uh the matt was trying to yesterday. teach me yeah because uh matt's favorite move with jago is that is that is that uppercut thing and it's then, not my favorite it's because you keep jumping in you need to hold on no but i i proved to you last night that you use that a lot even when i'm not jumping well i mean if it works it works and it does. Right? <laughs> and <laughs> the only reason why I kept using it though, because I can't stand, because I jump around a lot too in fighting games. Yeah. But you, she's faster. Yeah. And she's like, I mean, I can't do anything. I can't get a combo, so I gotta control the situation somehow. So I had to knock her on her ass. Well, my thing is, I can't stand when people are constantly backing away from me. That's because I feel like you're constantly, because like you said before, you don't. You're oh, you're straight up offensive. Yeah, and I have to kind of time myself and get into the rhythm of it all. And it's like that playing in rank matches too. Like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm already telling that. Yeah. Like people are just constantly backing away from you, especially if they have a little bit more life than you. Yeah, they know if the game times out, they're going to be the winner. Oh, so like, they'll yeah. just stay back and they'll just stand there on the other side of the screen, just blocking, just wait, and wait for you to come over there. Damn. And I'm like, Jesus, man, come on, let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> for real like I'll, I'll go and then you I jump over there and start getting into a combo and then if they're able to get a combo breaker and start fighting then good they'll stay in there for a second but, yeah. it, but if I start pulling off the combo they immediately jump to the other side of the screen <laughs> yeah. and just stay there until I come over there again <laughs> it's like, uh -uh. come on why don't you take the offensive let's go let's we'll get in there let's we'll do try. this well, I will say this it's hard to take the offensive when someone's jumping in constantly yeah, it is because you. I mean, they're in the air. You can't just start a combo in the air and like finish it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah yeah, really really awesome game. Um, the other characters, uh, <coughs> Glacius is pretty nasty. He is. Uh, he's after you get his moves down. Uh, I guess still slow though. Like he doesn't have any dash moves. Yeah, like, that's it. Like, like Chief Thunder game. is slow too. Chief yeah. Chief Thunder is probably my least favorite character so far really out of all of them uh the new character sadira is uh is pretty awesome um she she's fast i haven't learned a lot of her moves yet but she's yeah. de she's definitely she fast, fast too yeah. um and then saber wolf saber wolf, Sa yeah. saber wolf is another badass character he is. uh she he's probably my second favorite character right now next to orchid i like the second outfit you got for him or whatever with the goggles oh yeah with the the, 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 the steampunk thing. stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely awesome stuff. And they got a bunch of different outfits that you can unlock for the different characters. Um, Orchid has like this, like military goggles and, and mask that goes oh, over her mouth. Uh, um, Sadira has like this masquerade mask oh, with like yeah. a giant hat that goes on top of it. Uh, Jago has like a Celtic helmet yeah. thing. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, 
and you know uh, Chief Thunder, and, and uh, instead of having his feather his feather wig, it's like a giant bear. Oh, bear's awesome. head, really? but it's like a hat. It's like a hat kind of like, uh, that goes on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're definitely cool that that you can change out their colors and costumes and kind of make them feel a little bit more a little yeah. bit more personal. Uh, and uh, only only six characters right now, but you know you got Spinal and Fulgor coming yeah. uh, pretty soon within the next few weeks. So I'm looking forward to uh, to playing as them. Um, the survival mode's cool. Definitely looking forward to getting that arcade mode in there though. Yeah, yeah. I want to see the bosses like the final. You know, it was Idol. I can't remember. Gargoyles or whatever his name was. And Gargus. Gargus. Or something, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and you're talking about the, the red guy with the devil horns. The yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Idol, Idol will probably be it because if you go to the Killer Instinct wiki and you look at the roster, yeah. and it, it says Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct 2, and it has all the Killer Instincts, and then yeah. it has the new one on Xbox One, and it has a check mark if they're in the game. Oh, really? Okay. And it checked, for whatever reason, it check marks just about everybody except for Idol. Oh, really? Okay. But yeah, um, so I'm going to just go ahead and five frag Killer Instinct. Yeah, that's easy. Um, five frags. So, bada boom. And then last night, <laughs> me and Matt played a pretty poor, interesting game. Poor Pablo. <laughs> uh, called Loco Cycle. Which is uh, another one of the exclusive on, on Xbox One right now. It's a twenty bucks. You can download it on the game store. And uh, I pretty much sat there and watched Matt play the first three or four levels. Yeah, it was and, pretty uh, fun. Yeah, it was like Spy Hunter meets Batman, like Arkham City with the fighting. You're and all the cutscenes are live action. Yeah, like they're like B movie, yeah. making fun of themselves. Like it was really hilarious. It was that especially especially, especially that intro movie, dude. That that thing yeah. was like a half hour long. Yeah, it, was it was like it's an episode. <laughs> It was really cheesy. And it was great. Yeah, <laughs> it was really great. It had all the stereotypes. It had the African king. Yeah, walking like he looked exactly like uh, coming to America, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, with the crown <laughs> on, the leopards, you know, skin and stuff, and it was great. But uh, there's like two motorcycles that are like weapons. Yeah, and Iris, you control. I forgot the name of the other one, but it's like a really badass looking sons of anarchy type yeah hog. with spikes coming yeah. out of the top of the wheel thing and the wheel cover yeah and um basically pablo gets stuck to the back of the like wheel wherever back there and yeah a virus she gets struck by lightning which pretty much brings her life and gives yeah. her her own personality and she has to go to she looks <laughs> at that magazine with that chick on it. Yeah, and then she's watching the TV Yeah, about uh, the hog race or whatever. It's like some event for motorcyclists or whatever, yeah. and that chick's going to be there. She's like, we have to get there now. Yeah, and so, she like, really wants to see that chick. Yeah. <laughs> Falls ass out of the garage, and like the special agents are coming after you. That's where it's like Spy Hunter, where like you're controlling the bike, and you can boost and haul ass, and then you can shoot guns, and then you can also attack with Pablo. While you're driving, so if yeah. you hit like X, it's a weak attack. She kind of fishtails yeah. a little. Yeah, it's like he, a, like knocks like Iris' around. sweep kick. Yeah, <laughs> and then hard, you like literally flips them around. And then when there's flying enemies, you can hit the A button. That brings you up in the air. And then like her wheels like separate, and yeah. she's like punching and fighting. And then like you can counter, which is like Pablo. She like whips him around. <laughs> he comes down with like a headbutt or his wrench. Yeah, and knocks them down. And stuff. Or sometimes, like if they jump on the bike and you hit the counter, she'll do that flip where yeah. she like crushes their skull in the, the street. Face first, just <laughs> like oh my god, that was looking so painful every time. Every time you did that combo. <laughs> it's, it's um, but yeah, I mean, uh, graphically, it's not going to turn any heads. You no, know, it's uh, nice, crisp, you know, clean. It's, yeah, the graphics you totally could have had it on three hundred and sixty. Yeah. But uh, but it, it's colorful, vibrant. It's really the art style that carries the game. The, yeah. the humor of it. And uh, you know the gameplay, yeah, which is really fun. And uh, there's there's a a nice little upgrade system oh, yeah, uh, there was, yeah. uh, in there too. Not too deep, but not too light either. Yeah, nothing too. Uh, you know, just right, just right. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so um, I don't know. Uh, what, what what were you thinking for for logo cycle? For fragging? Yeah, fragging. I say, <laughs> fragging. What were you thinking? Well, the first few levels I played, I'd probably say. Yeah, just, just, just a preliminary. Maybe like three frags. Three frags. Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Frag it. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> only played first three levels. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like preliminary. But uh, but yeah. All right. So next, uh, Crimson Dragon. I've actually played through like about ten levels of this game. That looks. It looked. And, I saw you uh, play. It looked great. Yeah. Uh, if you if you enjoyed Panzer Dragoon back in the day, if you played it on Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, or the original Xbox. You're gonna like Crimson Dragon because mm-hmm. it's pretty much the same type of game but with a different name. Yeah. Um, fragging it. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be fragging it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the art style is really beautiful. It is. Uh, that's yeah. that's just what the only really way to s- describe uh, Crim- Crimson Dragon. It's just beautiful when you're flying around, like all the vistas, the levels, the dragons, the lo- even the, even the enemies are beautiful in an yeah. ugly kind of way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but uh, but yeah, and then so um, it's an on rail shooter. Like you're going on like a predetermined path, but you can still control like left to right, up and down, yeah. and you're like avoiding objects. So it still feels very free for a, a rail shooter. Yeah, well, there's some open segments in it too, isn't there? Uh, like because I heard in some boss battles, there's like open segments, kind of like Star Fox. Yeah, but even though those were self-contained. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah I mean, like area. like little yeah. little small sandboxes. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. Um, well, you have to because the boss, like the first boss you fought, was just like huge. Yeah, I mean, it, they have to give you there, more. There room. was one that was like a giant freaking eel, like some. It was near it some was giant. some <laughs> some Loch Ness monster type ish. <laughs> And then there was another one. It was like a dragon that had been like infected, and he was like had been like he looked like a mix of like a giant dragon and a cockroach. I don't know. It was insane looking. I don't know if I saw that one. A dude was like he was he had the dragon head, but like his body was like flattened and spread oh, yeah, out. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he had like these tentacles coming off instead it of his arms. Really and uh, that dude was insane. He was kind of hard too. Um, and then, like, when you're flying around, they got all sorts of different enemy types. There's this, there's these one things that are, like, spiders, and but they're huge, like, bigger than buildings. And, uh, like, normally they're friendly, but some of them have been infected, and they'll, like, go rogue on your ass <laughs> and, like, try and attack you and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's really cool, just like the old Crimson Dragons. You don't just randomly hit the button and fire fire fire, fire. Yeah. You, you 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 move the cursor over your over different parts of your target get the target locks then hit the button and yeah. fire and fire like volleys and then you can barrel roll and do all kinds of stuff yeah, yeah. um super fun game uh it's actually probably one of my favorite launch games um whoa death whoa um, Sorry, buddy. Um, it was coming down here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah. So uh, I'm thinking uh, four and a half frags for uh, for for Crimson Dragon. I'd say so. Uh, definitely love 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 that game. That's that's one of my favorites so far. Uh, boom, and then uh, Rise Son of Rome. But uh, I've beaten it. I think J Ray, you beat it. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, you can go ahead and, and start it out. Um, I was impressed with Rise, man. Uh, it definitely is better than some of the reviews it's getting across the net. I mean, I think some of those were overly harsh on it because I didn't see a whole lot wrong with it. It's uh, it's an amazing-looking game. Crytek seems to always do that. Yeah, um, they do. And, yeah. I mean, it looks spectacular. Uh, probably right there with Killzone and Forza is the best next-gen-looking games. I mean, those three stand out above the rest. And uh, Rise, is, it, it had a good story, I thought. Yeah, I, I, I like the story I got into the story, and I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good game, man. I really like it. Uh, the only thing, I guess, that you could say about it and is that by the end of the game, I guess the combat doesn't have a whole lot of depth, but I really didn't have that problem with it. I, I still enjoyed it by, on through the end of the game. Um. I would have liked to have seen an upgrade system. Yeah. Um, right. I would have liked to have seen... Uh, I mean, it has an upgrade system. I, I guess I would have liked to have seen, like, being able to use different types of weapons and stuff. Add and, uh, weapons and armor, yeah. Re- right, yeah. That would that would have been a great addition to it. And th- it's there in multiplayer, which I, I, I enjoyed a little bit, too. But, um, you know... As far as uh, the game itself, I mean, the combat was smooth, sweet. It worked really well the way you countered and blocked. It wasn't too yeah. easy. Uh, you know, the executions were sweet as hell. Um, I like yeah, the fact... they are brutal. Yeah, they are. And I like the fact that you can use... your, your Each execute... There's a group of ex- executions to gain focus, a group of executions to gain health, a group oh. of executions for damage boost, and a group of executions for... What's the other one? The experience. experience. Yeah. Experience. And, uh, you know, you can unlock executions, too. Um, you know, it's not a long game, 
But it wasn't overly short. I mean, I guess it was like Call of Duty length, you know, yeah. your average Call of Duty campaign, probably a good six to six to eight hours, you know. Yeah. If you want to run through it in five, you probably could, but um, you know, like I, I, I searched. There's a good, the there's a yeah, a good number of collectibles. There there's are. like three or four different types of collectibles. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, the game has has some nice depth to it as far as being able to you know a tackle tackle a couple missions different ways. Uh, it's pretty linear for the most part, but you can like in the forests and stuff you can. There's different paths. Yeah, there's different mm -hmm. paths that you can break. I think down it's to. like the first couple levels are more linear, but as you go on the game, the levels seem to open up more and they more. Do. They do. Like uh, there's one level near the end where you're in like that village that's like burning, and you got to defend. The castle, you got to, from those towers right. coming, and, and then after cool. you do that, you got to jump down and go through the town to get out of there. And like the town is super open, and there was like I noticed like a few different ways that you could travel through there. Yeah, yeah, and and then it gives you some choices too on how to defend certain things. Like if you want to yeah. put the archers here or the archers there. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, like uh, ancient Roman stuff and uh, Greek mythology, different things like that, you'll you'll, you'll like uh you'll like it. I mean it. I enjoyed it. I, I really did. The multiplayer side of it. Uh, have you oh, played the multiplayer side yet. of it yet? yet. Um, I really enjoyed that too. But it's there's only three maps, and I know there's more coming. Four if you have the day or the day one. Right, edition. right. Four. Um, that's something that will get stale a little bit over time. I can see that already. It hasn't yet. And there are a lot of things you can collect and booster packs you can buy, a la Mass Effect. It's just like Mass Effect in that regard. There's right. uh, consumables and stuff. And you stuff. said there's going to be 12 maps overall added with the DLC? Might be more than that. Yeah, 12. 12 yeah. or 16. No, 12. 12. 12, yeah. So it, it, there's three map packs coming. And uh might even be four. But regardless, uh, you know, it's something that you'll get into. I got into it a little bit, but, you know, I, I, I can see... It. I'd be. I doubt if I'll be playing it in three to four months. I was right. going to ask uh, <clears throat> those different choices they gave you in the, like in the levels. I was going to say, does that warrant another playthrough? Like, does it change? You it's know? Uh, there's only a few of them. I mean, yeah, I would say you would want to play through it again if you want to max your character uh, because okay. you can't do that through one playthrough. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to, it's worth doing it to max your character and to find all the collectibles. Right. Because even even if you try super hard to find all the collectibles on your first playthrough, which I did, you still will not find right. them all I somehow. did too. Yeah. yeah. And I was a good ways away on some of them. Yeah. So I'm thinking it might take two playthroughs to I'm do I'm thinking it. too because I actually compared our achievements and we found the exact same number of each collectible. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think that we actually found the exact same ones. I think we probably because I searched hard for them. I don't know if maybe some of maybe may, maybe some uh, some 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 of them are on the, like the higher difficulty setting. Maybe, maybe so. And maybe only on. Well, you know, one thing I didn't notice until like on late, how uh, how on Alan Wake, like certain manuscript pages you could only get by playing through nightmare mode. Well, you, you know, one thing I didn't notice until God, the Alan very Wake, very right. very <laughs> last level of the game. You know how you run up to certain things and you can leap out it automatically leaps over them or yeah. it slides under them. Yeah. Okay. Well. I didn't notice till the very last level of the game that you can actually cut some of those things down. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, the boards. Yeah. And I was like, I bet you I missed some of those collectibles by not cutting down some of those boards early in the game, uh, just trying to jump over them and realizing it won't let me jump over them. Yeah, Same thing yeah. happened with me. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah, Rise, I probably would go four frags on that. That's... I think it's going to be a solid... Four. I, I'll go 4.25 because I think it deserves a little bit better than an 8. But um, not yeah. quite a nine. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say I'd say four point two five as well. Yeah, not quite a nine. Like, what about you, Dev? Like, oh, the one of the things I liked about the game is like definitely for collectibles. When you go looking into your achievements to see oh how many of the the shields that you find, it gives you a percentage and tells you oh if just to say if there's ten oh you found eight, so it'll tell you there's eighty percent found. Yeah. So I really like that about the game because it makes you go okay, there's two that I'm missing. Now you could say, okay, let me go back and try to find these two that I missed, and you'll know when you get the achievement. Now, uh, but um, same thing. I give it about four, four point two five. Did you play multiplayer yet at all? No, I haven't had a chance to play the multiplayer. I saw you I had sent me a message. You to play it, yeah, but we I was in Dead Rising time. mode. I was big time into Dead Rising. There was no way I was hitting off that last night. <laughs> I, 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 I'm into that now. That game is addictive. Yeah, it really, really is addictive. Yeah. You, you know it's good if J-Ray likes it because he was more yeah. skeptical than anybody about Dead Rising. You're right. Play. You're right. But I like it. I got to say I was wrong on Dead Rising. Speaking of which, we're, uh, we're moving right on into Dead Rising, so take it away, Jay. Well, this is a game that I have played a ton over the last 48 hours, so uh, everything's definitely pretty fresh in my mind. 
I've got a lot that I like about it, a whole lot that I like about it. Big improvement got... over Dead Rising 2? <laughs> it doesn't even compare to Dead Rising 2. You can't even compare those two. They're two different games because one of them blows and one of them is good. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> basically, I mean, the, the only thing that I don't, I think that could have been better is uh, I think it could have been more consistent graphically. And the reason I say that is because there's certain times where the game looks really good. And then there's other times where it looks really bad, and you and 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 it just needs to be more consistent. Now, I haven't noticed any time where it looked really have, bad. I, I have. have. You play co-op mode? No, yeah. I have noticed but, that the the cutscenes look a little bit better than the actual well, they, game. The cutscenes look great when, when you're well, moving around, but when the graphics look the same to me. There's a lot of times time when I was riding around and the roller hog and stuff, and there's just thousands of zombies on the screen. It's yeah. insane how many they can, but. There's, you know, a lot of them are pixelated and fuzzy as hell, particularly in the back. And I know that's probably just, they haven't fully rendered yet, yeah. but it's really noticeable, <laughs> uh, especially when you're driving. Because you can oh. see things are trying to render, but they're not yeah. quite rendering fast enough. And it, it, it makes a lot of the zombies look really fuzzy and pixelated. And that's one of the things that uh, are, is really noticeable. But uh, other than that, man, the gameplay is fantastic dude I, i've really 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 had a good time with building different weapons uh and building different vehicles in this one which is yeah, pretty building awesome building vehicles i've been doing all the side missions uh it's a complete open world um i uh i like how they have the the different bosses based after the seven deadly sins yeah uh that uh, that, that you can beat and you get like different stuff from beating them the, the, those are the side the, missions right yeah yeah what is it the gung dao or whatever that weapon is Badass, the one you get from the Asian boss. Oh, yeah. I love that weapon, dude. That weapon is so awesome. Um, dude, what about the? Have you gotten the football? The the I've gotten the football. The, 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 the explosive footballs, stand. dude. The explosive football. Yeah, you just yeah. It's called what? What is it called? The hail mary? It's some, I don't know what it's called. You can take hail mary. Hail mary. You can take a microwave and turn it into like a ray gun. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, like you, you put handles on it and hold the microwave by its sides with the front of it open and it like shoots a ray gun out the front of the microwave. There is, there is some unbelievable... I got a sawed off with blades on it. I got the the, uh, the bladed mecha dragon where it's got like Wolverine blades and you can just fly and just oh. slice have up. You got, have you gotten the upgrade to that? The fire dragon? It, it, no, you get... It, it shoots fire, you have the blades, and yeah. you can fly. Yeah, I got those. Yeah, the ultimate, the ultimate mecha dragon or something. Oh like no, that. no, I haven't gotten the ultimate one where they're oh, all the together yet. Is, I've gotten one the fire favorites. one, the bladed one, and the regular one, but I haven't gotten the blueprint for the for the all. The all. one where it's like two pistol type things for each hand, and they have like six barrels on them, and you could like turn around oh, in circles yes. and shoot yeah, like dude, tons of shots. Oh, it's here's one thing that you might know, Def, that I don't. During the upgrades, you know, you get your. Uh, your upgrade the points. points, your PP points. Yeah, the PP points. Um, the 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 different categories up top. Mm -hmm. Top. What what okay. are the benefits of unlocking those with my? Uh, okay, now let's take the baseball bat. Let's say you start finding um, you know, like if you use a, a knife, I think, or a crowbar with the baseball bat, it makes you the gives you the barbed wire with the bat. Right. Right. So let's say for now you only have it for those two particular weapons. Well, when you unlock the baseball bat. Now you could use different components. So let's say you don't have a knife. Let's say you have a, a, a butcher. Oh, so it, as long as it's so in that category. You use a butcher knife. Right. So now let's right, say right, you right. find um, the machete. I and got you. let now. you use the machete. Well, look, you, you know. You unlock the baseball bat. One thing that I've found myself doing is, though, once you get a blueprint and you build it, it shows up in your weapon locker. So now I've just been going to my weapon locker and stocking up all the weapons I want and then going out. But the bad thing about that is that when you do that, when you um just shoot out the 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 combos, it it prevents you from um releasing anymore. So it might let go five, and then you have to either wait, wait a while you have to wait. or go to another safe zone. Right, right. To actually unlock it. Yeah, it, it, I think it gives me four now, and then it resupplies, and I have to go to another one. But uh, you know, what you should do is um drop the individual weapon, so that way you make the combo. You'll get more stuff out of it out of the locker than. Yeah. Just drop in the combos. Gotcha. Well, I've done a little multiplayer on it. And, like, if one of the things that I noticed, the, at least on my end. So let's say you, you have a combo, you have the blueprint for something, which I don't have. So I can't make it. So you say, oh, you drop it, I pick it up. Now I have it in my locker. I can't yeah. make it, but I have it. 
Right. Yeah, I know. Uh, I've I set my mind to completionist, and I've had several people just drop into my game and play with me for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, and then they're gone, and then I'll play, and then I'll have somebody else drop in. So I've been playing co-op without even really trying, just here's, from people here's, jumping in. Yeah. Here's my question. I, I've heard um, that you can play through the game and try to you know unlock everything and not have to worry about the time. I, I, you know, it, it's weird because that's what I've heard too. But yet, if and you take too long to do do certain things, time it, cut, is going down. it time goes is going. to a cut scene and then it shows that time is going down. Yeah, and, and time is definitely passing. And it says that your the city of Los Perdidos is going to explode in four days, yeah. nine hours. Then it goes oh, wow. to four days, eight hours. And I'm like, wait yeah. a minute, they told me they want a timer, and there's yeah. definitely a freaking timer on there. Maybe so, that's if you're playing on the easiest level. I guess I'm playing it. I think on hard. I'm playing on normal. I mean, but damn it, if it, I swear, if there, it's supposed to only be a timer on nightmare mode, right? I I think what it is traditional de Dead Rising. Not only is there an overall timer, but there's a timer for every mission you do, even side missions. Yeah, there is in that. I, I understand that. Yeah, but Where, there's times I'm just playing the game, just trying. In to this one, you just got the overall timer. There's not like little timers ticking down on the left side of your screen for every little side mission there you is have. you yes, have certain is. times yes, to complete is. all the side missions there's a bar yeah. and it gets smaller yeah. Yeah. if you don't and do it it cancels oh uh, well, yeah I'm, I'm, i must plan on an easier died. difficulty setting because i've just got the the missions and i don't have any time on them yeah there's timers there's on the side missions there's a bar for sure. right underneath it like yep. you see a gray bar or a red bar if there's a boss battle Mm -hmm. And as time goes on, if you continue doing other things, you don't even have to do main mission or stuff. You'll see that bar start to drop. Right, yeah. And that's, that tells you how much time you have because I didn't know that at first. And then all of a sudden, I just got, oh, this mission failed. The person died or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Yeah, I have to me like, too. And I was like, oh, wow. And then I figured it out. And that's when I was like, okay, that's what that bar is for. Well, I, I do know that... Uh... You know, there is definitely a timer going down, and I am wondering that myself because I was just running around collecting stuff, getting collectibles, and then out of nowhere, a cutscene came saying and it was nighttime. Yeah, that was oh. nighttime, right? And then, it, and then, uh, and then the timer I noticed it dropped with that. Yeah, and then the, you, then the radio, was... the TV station said you have a certain amount of time until we drop the nuke on Los Perdidos, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my god, you also use the um. The, um... What's the phone feature on this? The, the smart glass. Smart glass is it dope. Also tell, it gives you more in-depth about the game, too. Is so it's telling dope. you as time is passing on, on there. Have you gotten the phone calls and stuff yet? Yes, that's how you get your side missions. Yeah, oh, some of them. Yeah, and I'm yeah. talking about... Well, I've got most of them like that. Are you? Have you gotten... I'm talking about actually on your cell phone itself. Oh no 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 no! I thought you thought in the game. No, yeah, you get them on. You get them in the game, but if you have the smart glass companion open, you get special side missions, and your phone will ring just like it's ringing in real life. And you hit answer like you would if it was a real call, oh, and you take oh, the call wow. on your phone, and he oh, gives I you. Gotta try that. You can also drop nukes and stuff, which is a, a glitch I oh, wanted I to get to. Do that. Um, have you um? He, have you guys done any of the boss battles? Yeah, yeah, I've done I've done the roller hogs. Uh, uh, I've, I've done that. I've done the. Uh, Have you done Pride? No, I haven't. Pride is hilarious. <laughs> I, I I don't want to spoil it for you, but once you get that mission for Pride, go and do it. Well, I I can do it now. I I I've just been still going around collecting stuff. How about how about um lust? I don't believe so. I I don't know which I've got two balls. Or one open boss battle right now. I'm not sure which one it is. It's after Morgified. And it's after when you meet all him. And I don't know which boss battle it is. Because I haven't triggered it yet. Like there's a lot of side missions. Like it constantly comes up. And I just starting to ignore them because of the time. But I'm going to do the boss battle. I'm trying to get the boss battles. Yeah because that's how you get good weapons. But there's a glitch I wanted to talk about too. That uh, When you use Smart Glass. The guy who calls you and everything gives you these access codes. And it, it, it's like you can access the ZDC's nuke system or something or bomb system or drone system. That's what it is. And I had two drones that I could drop missiles. And okay. so I pressed one. I saw a huge swarm of zombies. And I pressed it. The tar It said targeting on my phone. And it said targeting. And it came up with the target on my game. Mm. And for the last seven hours, that target's been on my game. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, and it's I, I've done all looking online and everything, 
And they say it's supposed to happen instantaneously. As soon as that target comes up on your screen, you're supposed to see it drop and explode. Oh. But for whatever reason, it's locked. And I walk around, and that target's just beep, beep, oh. beep on the middle of my screen. Oh. <laughs> I've tried restarting the game. I've tried it all. Oh, wow. Really? Another glitch is that I've seen is when, when you're doing co-op. And I guess it's because you try um, to plug in your Xbox vehicle on vehicles. I'll just That'll zombies would just disappear and reappear out of out of, out of like of the waves that you're killing. And you just see them disappear, and I'm like, okay, where they go? <laughs> yeah. Well, I... yeah. So, um, boom. Yeah, uh, awesome, awesome game. Yeah, it is. I, I, we have uh, <laughs> determined that. Uh, so, uh, fragging it, I'm thinking, I'm thinking a, a, a solid four on Dead Rising Three. Yeah, it's uh, like I said. I haven't beaten it. I've played enough of it to frag it, though. I would say four is a good, a good number, for sure. Duff, you got a, a different one. Or are you are you going with four? I'm going with four. I enjoy it. The glitches bring it down a little bit, but four flags. Yeah, great game. If you have an Xbox One, pick it up. Definitely. Pick it up. It's definitely a must have. All right, um, Battlefield Four. I'm gonna go ahead and do the single player, and then we'll let Jay recover the multiplayer. Um, the campaign itself, um, it's good. Um, it's good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> graphically, it's a lot better than Call of Duty. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it looks like a next-gen game. I mean, not quite on the level of Rise and Forza, but it's close. Yeah, it really is. It's a great-looking game. Uh, the voice acting is, is well done. J. Ray will be happy to know. Uh, Which is something that Rise did really well that I wanted to mention. The voice acting, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, there there's... You know, Call of Duty's known for those ac the action packed. You know, constantly on the edge of your seat. And there's definitely some moments like that in the Battlefield Four campaign. There's also some slower, sloggier segments. You know, where you're moving slower and doing other things. I mean, which is fine. It doesn't have to be Call of Duty. But at the same time, you know, I kind of felt like I was getting bored at a couple of parts. Um, you know, uh, but overall, the campaign is pretty decent. Uh, but what really ruined the campaign for well, me is the fact that for some reason Battlefield 4, EA and DICE decided that it would save your progress to their origin EA servers rather than the console. So if you're playing through the campaign and you lose connection to the EA servers without knowing, then you're playing for nothing because you're going to lose any progress you make while you're not connected to those servers. And EA servers mm -hmm. are shit. They really are. <laughs> They've just been up and down and up and down ever since ever since the game launched. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I was on the last level and halfway through the last level mm. of the game, getting close to the very end, and then decided, I was like, all right, well, before I polish it off, polish this off, watch the credits, I'm going to play some Killer Instinct. <laughs> Switched it over, play Killer Instinct. Polish it off, yo. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll never polish it off now. But uh, so, played a little Killer Instinct, then came back, and it was like, continue campaign, uh, chapter three. And I was like, chapter three? It's supposed to be on like chapter 10. Not today. So uh, <laughs> I loaded it up, and sure enough, it had brought me all the way back to the third chapter of the yeah. game, the last time I happened to have EA servers happened to have been up while I was playing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I contacted EA, and they pretty much said, fuck off, there's nothing we can do about it. Whoa! Yeah, Whoa. that's pretty much what they said, <laughs> in, in a nutshell. This and, is a family podcast. And they were like, they were like, uh, they were like, uh, we, we we can walk, we can walk you through some uh, some uh, some troubleshooting footsteps to help you make oh, wow. <laughs> to help you make sure this doesn't happen in the future. I was like, well, you, I was like, well, you don't even got to worry about that because I'm not playing through this crap garbage game ever again. So we don't even got to worry about that. And he was like, oh, you're sure? I, I can walk you through these steps if all you do is give me the say-so. And I was like, don't you worry about it, buddy. <laughs> you ain't give him the say-so, yeah. He was like. He was like, "Well, I hope when you do this survey at the end, you won't uh, you won't take your frustration out on me, as you realize there's nothing I can do about it. If I could get back your progress for you, I would." I was like, wow. "Right, sure you would, buddy." I'm giving you horrible feedback. <laughs> <laughs> that guy lost his job because you were angry. <laughs> and it's holidays hey. too. We go. No. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I was just you know pretty pissed. You know, I was yeah. like, once that happened, yeah, I was thanks, like, man. I was like, there's no Appreciate freaking, it. there's no way. That I'm about to play another eight, another another eight hours through this campaign again. There's just no way, yeah. and waste another eight hours of my life. You know, that's true. And it's... Maybe once they update the game and fix out these problems, I'll try and play through it again. When I got nothing else to do one day, when I'm super bored, I doubt bored. you'll ever play it again. Probably won't, but, <laughs> but maybe there's a slim chance. But uh, you know, that being said, 
if that hadn't happened, I, I would have been fairly satisfied oh, with the campaign. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and so J Ray's played the multiplayer, which I haven't. So what's that? What's, what's that looking like? Um, I played it for PS4, which you know, it's basically the same thing with Xbox One, uh, the same game, and I, I like it a lot. Uh, one thing that you notice for sure is a lot faster pace and smoother. Whoa! One thing you know for sure is it's a lot faster pace and smoother than the previous <laughs> Battlefields. Uh, I guess it's because it's running at sixty frames, and uh, you can definitely tell. The, the online is smooth, it's fast-paced, and, and it feels a hell of a lot better than the Battlefield 3. Yeah. Uh, the conquest modes are awesome. I noticed yeah. that if you have trouble controlling your jets and stuff, yeah. change the controls to Lefty Legacy, and it makes things a hell of a lot easier to control uh, all the vehicles. I know that sounds weird, Lefty Legacy, <laughs> but because we're not left-handed, but it works, and it works good. Um, yeah. It's a hell of a game, man. I, I love it. I think it's great. You know, the, the maps are awesome. They uh, and and I, I've always liked the explosive environments better about Battlefield yeah. than than the Call of Duty. So um, you know, definitely something that you should play. There's a couple of maps uh, that well, obviously when you play the smaller maps, they're just sections of the big conquest maps. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's one, and I, I can't remember the daggone name of it, but it's uh, it's basically just a central building on a couple islands, and uh, that's my favorite map by far. Uh, it, everybody kind of goes through the buildings and, and snipes wow. from across the stairwells mm -hmm. and uh, God, it, it, it's a sick game. One thing that you will need to do though, if you're a, if you're used to Call of Duty like I am playing Battlefield uh, online, it's not a run and gun game like yeah. Call of Duty. You know, you're not going to run you know into every you know firefight because you're going to lose them. You know, you need to stay back and snipe more. Yeah. Don't necessarily got to snipe, but just be more cautious going yeah. through things. You Slow know, it you, down. right. That's something I noticed in Battlefield 3. A lot of the assault weapons and stuff, people would charge and they would die a lot because yeah, they're yeah. really OP. You know, you get shot a couple times, you're dead. It's that's more right. realistic. That, that's, that's exactly right. It's the same right. like it's in Battlefield same 4. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can't, you can't rush in because you're just going to die yeah. very quickly. So It's a more strategic game yeah, than Call of Duty. Yeah. A lot more strategic. And I like that part yeah. of it. And now that they've made it 60 frames per second, it's more along... If you want to play it like Call of Duty, you can play corridor, you know, smaller yeah. maps and corridor-style maps. And uh, it's still, though, you still got to be more cautious, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it almost promotes not camping, but just not Evaluating acting like a crazy asshole. Yeah. You know, so. Doing it more realistic, like you're actually in right. a fight. Yeah, Instead of yeah, Call of that's Duty, right. you run into a fight, you flip around real quick you shoot the guy behind you turn around shoot the other dude yeah doesn't Instead, happen like that in battlefield yeah, very right. often so yeah I don't have battlefield, so. for sure I have um three, so. yeah overall four is a lot better than three. i'm thinking i want to go three and a half for battlefield four but that might just be my bitterness about the campaign so i'm gonna give it <laughs> so, so i'm gonna give it 3.75 against my better judgment uh, yeah. and uh and, and go with that well how many people can you have online 64. 64. They also have 32 modes also, mm -hmm. which oh, is the smaller maps. Right, where you don't have yeah. to worry about the vehicles. That's right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, uh, 3.75 for uh, for me. I've only played the multiplayer, and uh, so I can't, uh, I'm not going to frag it, but. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, bada boom. All right, so Assassin's Creed 4 um, is, was a big surprise for me. I actually was waiting to play this as one of my last games because I was like, eh, it's Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> and I'm probably not going to give a crap. It'll be fun while it lasts and that'll be about it. And then, but uh, I got to say, uh, dope game blew me the, blew me the freak away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, it, it, they took all the best parts of Brotherhood, all the best parts of Assassin's Creed 3 and just put them together. It's an awesome game. Um, the best parts of Brotherhood, you know, was with, you know, being able to have your own thing, your assassins, and send them out on missions and stuff like that, and and the the, the better mechanics from Brotherhood versus Assassin's Creed Three, which had the rope dart, which was awesome, and it had you know the ship battles, which was awesome. Uh, but they and, took the ship battles to a whole new level in this. Right. So they, they, they just took the best parts and then, and then put them together and made it pirate themed, which was the best thing they could have done. Yeah. Because uh, I think this is probably my favorite theme out of all the Assassin's Creeds. Um, just had the fact that you have your ship and you can do so many upgrades to it and customize, you know, the sails, the look of it. You're, you can sail like literally anywhere you want. The setting and, is a great place too, and the, the location, I mean. Right. The, um, the islands. 
Yeah, and then and like I said, there's a ton of different islands. You can yeah. just sail around at your will and, you know, go to these islands. A lot of them are plantations with slaves, and you can go there and kill everybody and, and you know, fr- get, get, fr- yeah, you know, free the slaves, and they've got these warehouses, and you can, you can loot the plantation warehouses. You get tons of different uh, supplies that you use to upgrade yourself and your ship. Um and you know metal is the most precious thing ever oh my god it's so hard to find ships carrying metal and you need metal to get 90 percent of the upgrades um so it's been taking me forever to upgrade my ship all the way forever you'll get there forever you'll get there um (laughs) uh, then you get the time saver pack too yeah the time saver pack gives you 500 metal 500 metal will get you one upgrade oh wow (laughs) yeah um, it might save you like an hour I guess. Oh, that was a precious hour. hour. <laughs> yeah, good thing it was only ninety nine cent. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so um, graphically it looks really good on next gen. Um, you know, again, not quite up there with Rise and Forza, but I thought it looked really good. One uh, of the things really good that you'll notice too the is the colors are real vibrant. Things render quicker on the next gen. So when you're sailing and stuff, you'll oh. see things rendering in the background on current gen, but yeah. they're they're not they they're there already yeah. on next gen, and the water looks a ton better on next gen yeah, yeah and like ships on the water just go about their business like you'll be sailing and you'll see the spanish and the british ships like in the middle of a giant battle with each other yeah, i saw you game clip that yeah <laughs> and you, you you could just sit there and watch them and, and wait until somebody's weakened and then just roll up in there <laughs> finish them off and reap the goods and uh, <laughs> that's what i'll be doing sometimes if i see a big battle going on i'll just kick back and be like all right Who's gonna win this? That's one? A, yeah, he has a game clip where he's just sitting there, and they're they're like firing you yeah. know cannons and everything at each other, and he's just sitting there, and I'm like, is he gonna do anything in this clip? <laughs> nope, clip ends, and he's still sitting there. <laughs> Did they change a lot of the gameplay with the ships? Because I played the third one, yeah, and I know there was only a few things you could do: drop sails, and then you know you just go out there, basically you sit. Oh, uh, there's there's, there, there's a ton of different stuff. There's travel yeah. speed sailing now. Yeah, oh, yeah when you're not that. in a fight, where you can go yeah. a lot faster. And there's also new weapons where you can drop yeah. flaming barrels behind you. You've and, got you've, oh, you've got okay. the cannons on both sides of the ship. Mm-hmm. If someone's behind you, you've got the flaming barrels. You've got the precision cannons, which you can do precision strikes on ships. You've also got front facing cannons, and you've got mortars for a, uh, for long range. Yeah, oh, nice. and, and you then, got options uh, now. And then uh, you've also got uh, the chain shots with the two balls with the chain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The coolest cool. thing about it though is if you're in the middle of a battle, mm-hmm. you can just jump off the wheel and dive in the water, and you know it, it's not separate mission battles. Everything's connected. You know, okay. so you don't trigger a mission battle and your boat goes. You know, you get on your boat and go. And if you want to just jump in the water and go about do something else, you can't. Right. Now, so. are you do you raid other ships? Like get up next to them, you could jump off mm-hmm. onto theirs and mm-hmm. actually yeah. fight onto their ship. Oh okay. yeah. Um. Once you get their life down to a certain point, then you roll up beside it and you just hit the B button for board, and then your your pirate guys will start throwing hooks over to other ship and reel it in. Now, can't you just jump? Movie. Can't yeah. you just jump out of your ship and swim over to them and climb them though? You could if you wanted. It'd be yeah. a death sentence. Well, yeah, I know, but you, you can do that. You don't yeah. have to just board it with the B it. button now. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's because it'd that... be a death sentence because you'd be going over there by yourself, <laughs> and there's like 25 guys on the ship, and you're gonna die. Trust me, I tried that. <laughs> it's, it's better to reel them in, and 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 while you're reeling them in, you uh, you can use your precision cannon to fire shots onto the deck of their ship and take out some of their guys. Oh. And after that, then I, I go to the side of my ship with my pistol and take out a few <laughs> of them, and then go over there and start assassinating. It's way easier that way. And right. the other Assassin's Creeds, I remember, you can actually take on like a big group, like 15 people. You go you know, swimming like, over there. You're going to get raped. Yeah. <laughs> did they change a lot of the, the fighting too now so that you can't just sit there and block and then right when they attack. That's, counter, a, that's another thing about this game. The combat is so much better. The enemies aren't just blocking over and over and over and over yeah, and over and over. Yeah. And oh my and, God. And, that was my biggest complaint about the other Assassin's Creed games, which is why I really didn't like them as much as J-Ray. I thought the, I thought the combat was, to be blunt, shit. In the other Assassin's Creed games, and uh, but uh, it's so much better now. So much well, one better. One of the things that's better is you don't just counter everything yeah. in an attack, you can actually go go at guys now without counter, you, counter, 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 counter. You can counter, or you can break their defense, or sometimes you'll just swing and the and the and the hit will act the, the swing will actually hit them rather than them just blocking everything, <laughs> yeah. right? 
Like, you know, I would just get tired of, like, swinging at someone. They're just blocking over and over and over and over and over and over yeah, and over. And, was, and, and yeah. on, the Jaegers and stuff. Uh, yeah. On, like, the 37th hit, one would connect. And I'm like, all right, God, well, one, one's dead. But no, but, yeah. but this one, you can take people out with a quickness. And you can chain kills and do combos. It's, that was my biggest problem with Assassin's Creed 3 was this. They blocked the whole time. You know, you have to do certain grapple moves just yeah, to break your yeah, defense. And you had to do throwing knives or stuff like that yeah. just to get through them. Yeah. yeah, it's really awesome. And then I feel like there's a lot more places to hide on this one because of the bushes and the shrubbery yeah, the that's everywhere. That. You know, you can... Stalking you, zones, as they call them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can creep around a whole map without ever being seen. It's just... It's, it's a really awesome... Um, what else? The story is really good so far. Uh, they've got the Mayan stones that you can find. Which uh, you can uh, once you find them all, it'll unlock something cool. I have no idea what. Yeah. Um, in Assassin's Creed Three, you had the homestead, which was my favorite part of Assassin's Creed Three. In this one, you get your own pirate island where you've got like your, your house, which is a big like the mansion type thing that you can upgrade and make better. And then you've got like your own little village outside where all oh, where nice. all your pirate crew members live, and you can open it. You can be, you can build a. a a brothel, you can build a tavern, a harbor master, Man, cool. a bonfire on the beach, a general <laughs> store, and then you can just upgrade all of this stuff, and it's pretty much like the homestead from Assassin's Creed 3, but better. Um, One thing I liked about, it's real small, but it just fit the whole mood of the game when you went whaling. Yeah, like yeah, that was thing. Just uh, the hunting. Awesome. How, uh, you can go harpoon hunting. You'll go out, like, go out on your rowboat, and you got the harpoons, and you can do sharks, whales, dolphins. I mean, yeah. there's just so much stuff you can. And then on, the on, on land too, hunting oh, yeah. stuff. The dive bells are yeah. really cool. Like uh, when I was talking to Jerry about this game at first, he was talking about the hunting, and I was like, eh, I'm probably not going to do that. But I've actually found myself doing a lot, See? of, a lot of hunting on this. <laughs> <game>. <laughs> he was like, Yeah, I'm not going. to I don't want to kill the same damn animal for an hour. I yeah, well, it wasn't. Hunt. It wasn't fun in Assassin's Creed. I don't know mm -hmm. but why, yeah. but for some reason it is in this game. For some reason, hunting is actually fun in this game. It's a big way to make money in number three. Yeah. Um, and, and you pretty much need like a lot of that stuff. Uh, the, the animal hunting isn't going to get you any ship upgrades, but you pretty much do the animal hunting for your personal upgrades. Like uh, to, holsters. To, yeah, and, uh, new, new pouches, like better armor for more health. And more pistol holsters. Like you, you can have four pistols once you're fully upgraded, oh. which is a good thing because pistol reloading takes uh, four. Like it really yeah. does. Yeah. But the yeah. nice thing is you can have four of them. So yeah. So if you four if you have four, you know you can boom chain four shots. I think I've only got three right now. So well, I just I well, can't you do more than that if you have the blunderbusses. Uh, I the ones I have have a pretty fast reload speed, and sometimes you'll be able to chain two shots. Well, no, I mean like the double like, barrel pistols and stuff. Oh, I, I, I don't shots. know. I haven't. I haven't used any double barrel pistols. I don't even know if there are any. I haven't used any. Yeah, I know in Assassin's Creed Three, you could get the the double and even the duck mm -hmm. foot or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and that had five or four shots oh, on yeah, it, yeah, four yeah, barrels, yeah. and you could just be boom, 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 boom. You know? I definitely haven't seen any four barrel guns. Well, well, there, there might be a two barrel one. You gotta think though, this takes place before that. Yeah. <clears throat> so right. technology wise. They, had, they, they hadn't about. invented four barrels yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> but uh but yeah, um so um really, really liking Assassin's Creed four. Um probably just gonna go ahead and say five frags on that. Five in it? Yeah. Probably. Because it's just I'm not that awesome. frag it quite yet. Yeah. I don't wanna I want to play. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I haven't even played the multiplayer yet, so you know, could change once I play the multiplayer. But I think uh, the campaign alone merits a five. Well, the multiplayer is always pretty fun. In Assassin's Do they have shit battles in this one on multiplayer? No, that was something oh. that they talked about adding in DLC. And they said that they had they, they had, need to they had originally started to do the ship battles in multiplayer, and he said that they couldn't quite get it right in time for release, so they decided that would be something they'd probably add in DLC. So they need to. It'll make a lot more money though doing it that way too, because you know a lot of people they get into the ship battles as soon as you release that everybody's gonna want that. That's yeah, a, that's dude, it's whatever. Gonna, I'm gonna tell you, dollars. Yeah, the ship battles are fun. All right, boom. And then, so, uh, last game to review before we get into the news, uh, Connect Sports preseason. You played through some. I haven't played it at all yet. So, uh, you, you talked about it a little bit earlier You can with the, the new Connect. Uh, yeah. So, what, what, what's, what, what's it's it like? It's not a lot to review. It's, uh, it's a very more like, small... More like a preview. Yeah, more like a preview, like a demo. It's it's basically one, one map, and you race. It's a wave race style setup. Yeah. Um, you use your arms. Which I'm glad they chose wave racing for the preseason rather than, like, the wall climbing. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, yeah. <laughs> you hold your arms out like you're holding a jet ski. You use your right hand to pull 
and that'll that's the gas, and then you just basically turn like you're turning a jet ski to go. Mm-hmm. When you hit jumps and stuff, you can lean forward, lean to the side, or well, I guess I should say to do sharp turns, you need to lean uh, to. Yeah. Um, you can play it sitting down or standing up, but leaning forward and back allows you to do flips and whatnot, oh, yeah. um, and and jumps and special jumps, and you know you got to go through certain. Uh, rings and stuff to score more points and uh you know that's pretty much it it's not a whole lot i will say it shows off how more precise this connect is okay. than the last one which is i think what they wanted to do with this right you know because it didn't really have a connect game launching with the system and connect sports wasn't going to be ready so they decided i guess they'll give us something to show it off yeah. and, it, and, and it's good for what it is you know it's just just basically a demo so is uh graphically it's a uh... Pretty good looking game. It's decent, you know. I mean, it's not up there with the rises or the the, the traditional game. Well, but it looks. I know uh, what what looked like it would make it for me is like it's, it's got that that rare art style to it, it with, does, with, with yeah. really vibrant it colors. It does. It does. I mean, it, it, it's a good looking game for a connect motion game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks a lot better than the other Connect Sportses, but it's still not going to hold a candle to your AAA titles like Rise and, and, and yeah. uh, you know, Battlefield right. and stuff like that. But it is a good-looking game. It doesn't look bad at all. Yeah. So. All about the fun. All right, so, boom. Uh, there we go uh, into the news, which we would just roll on through. Um, Assassin's Creed Liberation HD coming to 360 and PS3 on January 15th. I think PS3 actually gets it on the 14th and then 360 on the 15th. Um, bada boom. So definitely looking forward to that. After playing, you know, this, I'm probably definitely yeah. going to pick that up. Um, I, I I hope they bring it to to next gen consoles also because okay. I'd rather download it on Xbox One than 360. I hope they honestly. bring. I hope they bring the uh, the um Avaline stories for Assassin's Creed Four to Xbox uh, One. After the six months, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope they do that because I'm playing at the Black Flag on Xbox One. So obviously, I'm not going to buy it for PS4 just to play it on that. So. Right. For sure, but yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, the uh, games with gold uh, for this month: Gears of War, uh, followed by Shoot Many Robots. I, of course, own Gears of War, but I'll probably you know download it just to have it on my digital library and yeah. then delete it just so I've got it. But uh, Shoot Many Robots, I actually never downloaded that game. Thought about it a couple of times, but never did. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to that one. You know. I'm looking forward to them bringing games with gold to Xbox One because then they won't be able to. Yeah, uh, they won't be able to give us these games with it. Which is also here on the list. Yeah, so they're going to be bringing the games with gold promotion to Xbox One, uh, not right away, but uh, sometime this coming year in 2014, that'll be coming to gold. Uh, probably we'll be getting games that we already own and probably be the launch titles. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, so it'll probably be like Crimson Dragon, Angry Birds, Star Wars, instead of paying $100,000 for Yeah, your... that's another thing we should mention. Rovio is out of their damn minds. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking charging $50 for yeah. Angry Birds, Star Wars. Isn't it twenty nine ninety nine on Wii U? I don't know. I think if it's like three six, I know they had the Angry no, Birds. No, three six. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had they had the Angry Birds trilogy on three sixty. You get yeah. you get uh, Angry Birds Star Wars, Angry Birds Rio, and the regular Angry Birds. All three of those games for twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Where here they're trying to charge almost double for just Star Wars, yeah. and then you could get that on your phone for a dollar or free if you don't mind playing with ads. So ridiculous. I, so I don't I don't know what Rovio is smoking there, but they need to come up off it. Um. Boom. Uh, Lego Hobbit game confirmed for 2014. Uh, obviously, that probably really shouldn't be a surprise. Um, you know, Lego uh, has been they've been pretty much picking up just about every franchise there is out there. And uh, Hobbit fits right along in there with what they've been yeah, doing. Yeah, I was waiting for that. So, uh, I'm sure I'll pick this up for Solomon on Xbox One. But yeah, uh, it's been confirmed for 2014. Not exactly one in 2014. Uh, let's see. And Activision wants to resurrect the oh, Crash yeah. Bandicoot now, series. You know, I read this and I saw this, and this, there is a bunch of stuff going on right now where people are talking about Sony bought the Crash Bandicoot. People were yeah. speculating that that uh, they might have bought it back because Activision had took all their Crash Bandicoot right. stuff off yeah. their website. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But then uh, this came out, and they said that they just took it down because they're they're, they're looking for a way to reinvent. Crash Bandicoot. Oh, okay. Because there was also some street signs and stuff that had yeah, a Sony that. logo pointing yeah. to Crash Bandicoot standing there like that. And that's what I was wondering. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, uh, Activision definitely still owns it. So, oh, okay. No, no surprises there. Uh, and speaking of surprises, Titanfall got some surprises coming to the VGAs this coming week. So, uh, I don't know what kind of surprises they could possibly have, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll be watching the VGAs mm-hmm. to find out. 
Maybe they're going to have a story mode. And then uh, Xbox One uh, getting exclusive Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes content. I know Sony uh, advertised that as a big thing during their uh, launch night that they yeah. were getting an exclusive content for the PS4, the old, yeah, which turned out to be Classic Snake, Snake, and, classic, uh, Snake yeah. and classic Snake and a Classic Level. Yeah. Uh, and then so now we got uh, exclusive content for the Xbox One as well. They didn't announce exactly what yet, but both consoles will be getting their own respective exclusive content. Content. All right, and then uh, J Ray was super excited about this one. Big time! Oh, that is going to be. Telltale good. is developing Game of Thrones as their next one. That should be good. Cool. <clears throat> right. That's, that's going to be awesome. Now it's worth noting that Telltale themselves hasn't confirmed this no, yet, but several sources to IGN have confirmed it. Yeah. So it's pretty much a given that it's happening. And I can't wait. It was also on a Game of Thrones blog that I oh. read. Um, and if there's anybody who can make a good Game of Thrones game, it's Telltale. Yeah, that's I'm true. guessing if we hear if we're going to be hearing about that anytime soon, it'll be at the Video Game Awards this coming Friday. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I there was there, it's worth noting too that Telltale had said previously before that that they had just acquired a dream license. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that sounds like a dream one. It does for J Ray especially. <laughs> Bada boom. All right. And then uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. It's coming February 18th on Xbox One and 360. Yeah. So, um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to that game a lot. Yeah, uh, I've seen after it. seeing that at E3 and the way they're taking it to like the third person shooting perspective, definitely looking forward to that. It's like that mixed with some tower defense. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah, Garden Warfare looks pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Big time news. Tomb Raider Can sequel I, possibly I coming at the video. Man, the next gen Tomb Raider just gets my Phoenix rising, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Because the last Tomb Raider was an incredible game. It was. And uh, Microsoft is, is, is hinting at uh, other game reveals and some new Quantum Break details at the Video Game Awards. That's as well. nice of them to go with some new details. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is nice of them. <laughs> uh, Bethesda uh, uh, trademarked Fallout 4 recently in big. Europe, and speculation is it's going to be announced at the VGAs as well. Well, that's where they really big, big things at the VGAs. Yeah, they announced uh, Skyrim at the VGAs, so that sounds likely. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to tell you. You talk about a game that just would drop the socks off of next-gen owners. Yeah. Fallout 4 is a perfect one for it. Yeah, it is. Um, bada boom. And then uh, bada boom. 4J, the, the, the developers of the 360 version of Minecraft, is working for a way to uh, import your, your your worlds over to the Xbox, Xbox One, One version if you have it, which I think is really nice, especially considering for people who have me, who have kids like Solomon, who yeah. have like 500 worlds, worlds. on his Xbox. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, you know, insane amount of worlds. Be, be, kids be, love Minecraft. Be good they for do, him to be they? able to transfer that over. Um, but, uh, so yeah, and then we mentioned the, th uh, Games with Gold's coming to Xbox One. Uh, the new Halo Spartan Assault achievements for 360 and Xbox One total 1,000 G, wow. which is going to be, which is the new norm, which I think is really awesome, because, uh, you know, it, it was really bad when it was 200 G. I know, yeah. Then they upped it to That's 400 G. 400 G was better, but still not... You know, so what you want. Yeah. yeah. Now it's what you want with a thousand G. It is. Uh, Rayman Legends coming to Xbox One in February. And the Unity license will be free for any developers, any developers who choose to do the ID at Xbox. Um, I already have Rayman Legends for, for 360, but I might pick it up for Xbox One. I will be picking it up for Xbox One because I didn't get it for 360, and now I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised that they're bringing it out for the next gen console so. since it's been out for a while now. Yeah, maybe there'll be some improvements. Um, you know, but I mean, I guess it makes sense. Ubisoft trying to make that money. Yeah, I love me some Ubisoft. But uh, here was uh, some surprising news. Uh, Xbox One uh, pretty much dominated the Black Friday uh, sales battle. Yeah. And I actually thought that P that it was going to be the other way around. I thought PS4 was going to do it just because there's so many. Uh, Sony fanboys on the internet, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I just, it, there just seems like more Sony fans out there than more well, Xbox yeah, fans. Well, that, that, that surprised me too, especially with the price, but um, I think some of that has to do is, like I said, on Black Friday when I went to GameStop, they had 25 Xbox oh, yeah. Ones and only 15 uh, PS4s, so that could have played some of the part of it too. But, yeah, well, uh, these surveys were taken from Target and Walmart, so... Um, but I'm imagining they probably had the same kind of thing happen too. It seemed yeah. like Xbox One had more stock available. You know, yeah. they definitely did for their allocations to GameStop. <laughs> Wii U down in fifth place. Yep. That is a sad, sad thing. But yeah, uh, so they, they, they took 31% of the market share. 
uh, for Xbox One, and then Xbox 360 came in second place, yeah. which was another surprise. That really. was another thing at GameStop. People were buying last-gen consoles like crazy. PS3s and Xbox 360s were selling galore, yeah. especially yeah. 360. I saw like 10 people buy 360s when I was there. Yeah, that's crazy. I guess some people are just now getting... <laughs> yeah. Well, they had yeah. some great bundles and good deals going with 360. Yeah, or maybe people are just trying to get rid of that old Pro and get one of the new slimmer ones or yeah, whatever. Like I that. guess, yeah. I got to think about the library of both those systems. Or have. if you've got the Xbox One and, you know, the, the new slim Xbox 360 looks a lot like the <laughs> Xbox One, so maybe, maybe you want them to match. Jeez, yeah. You know, th th there's people who are anal about things matching. You know, there are. So... Uh, but, but yeah, so uh, PlayStation 4 took, I think, how much of the market share? I think it was like 14%. Them and PS3 tied for third. Yeah. Yeah, 15% yeah, of the market share each, which, so, I mean, yeah, Microsoft more than doubled that with the Xbox One. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, Wii U with only 6% of the market share. That's and then, you know, they, they just came out with a Killer Mario game that I hear is really yeah. good. So, yeah, I mean, you know, hear nothing but good things about that. I, I was hoping that that would kind Can't of... see anybody buying Wii U's at GameStop. Oh, sure. I was yeah. hoping that I was hoping that, that that new Mario would drive some sales for him, but I guess not, you know. You, I didn't see it. And, and, and I've been saying this for a while. you got to come with more than just Mario. Yeah, it's getting I mean, old now. You like... know, Mario's great, and even if you make a great Mario game, it doesn't. you got to have more than just Mario. Mario. Yeah, you sure do. And then you know, you know, they call this the year of Luigi. But what is Luigi more than an, an, an extension of Mario? Just a different color swap. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know. yeah, you know, get bring Star Fox back, bring no. Metroid back. For real. They get that to. new Zelda out there. Hurry up on Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. You've been taking forever with it. I mean, come on. Mario Kart. I mean, Mario yeah. Kart is like it, Mario Kart is the console seller. It is that more is more more now. than yeah. more than any other franchise they have. Like my dad bought a Wii for Mario Kart. They did really, yeah. You know, I know other parents who bought Wiis for Mario Kart. Everybody loves Mario Kart. Non gamers love Mario Kart. Mario, they yeah. want to sell some Wiis. They need to get Mario Kart out there. And that's, that's and, and, yeah, trolling along there a little. Low. Ah, God, you know. And, they're still selling the Wii's, though. Yeah. Even though they're not producing them anymore, they're still uh, selling. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a good thing for them, because uh, they, yeah. they, they need to make some money somewhere. That's true. Uh, Call of Duty Ghost with the number one selling game. No surprise there. Yeah. Bada boom. And then, so, damn, Black Friday sales. Big things going on. And then, so, J-Ray was up in the thick of it. He went down and waited, <laughs> in, waited in line for a couple hours just to get Dead Rising 3. Mm -hmm. It's pretty brave of you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, really. It's pretty brave. Brave. Yeah, and it was it was nuts, man. There was a lot of people there to buy the next gen consoles, and they could not obviously get everybody. And I will say this: Xbox benefited because I told you there was these people that got in line. Oh yeah, right behind me. It was a couple and a group of three, and the guy, the couple, the guy that was with the couple said, "You guys go ahead." They got there right at the same time, so he got in line. They both wanted a PS3. Yeah. The last PS3 ticket went to the guy who he said, "Go ahead." You take the line. <laughs> so he got the last ticket, and he was like, oh, man, it, well, it'd be the right thing to do would be to let me take it since I let you go first. And he uh, was like, no, you surrendered that when you let me go first. <laughs> and they got into a huge altercation. And uh, I think the people behind him ended up buying a PS3. Uh, yeah, yeah, but... Oh, crazy! Uh, no, so were these two people fighting over a PS3 or a... PS4? Oh, they, okay, because they they, oh, you, you said PS3. Oh, I meant PS4, and then I think the people <laughs> behind him ended up getting a PS3, yeah, right? Because they could, they, they might have ended up getting an Xbox One. I don't know, but they waited in line and they they came in the store and bought something, and they couldn't get a PS4. I know that because they got that's what they got in the fight. But they were about to fight. I mean, they were about to fist fight over yeah. that shit. It's Black Friday. <laughs> Dude's wilding out. Yeah. And then uh, Saints Row 4 got that holiday DLC coming on December 11th. Uh -oh. Evidently, Santa has been kidnapped. Saints Christmas. Yeah. Santa has been kidnapped and is stuck in the simulation, and it's up to you and the gang to save him. So That should be good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's probably going to be funny. Um, and then uh, the new uh, Xbox One exclusive from Insomniac Games, Sunset Overdrive, has been confirmed to be coming out this next year in 2014, All right. which is good news, which uh, goes right along with uh, the no drought promise from Microsoft, which, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they've promised no drought this kind of this next coming year. They will have exclusives coming every month, according to them. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, I hope they keep up with that because I'm looking forward to playing it. 
I'll love them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then so uh, Ruffian, uh, Ruffian Games, the Crackdown oh. Two developers are working on a uh, a game right now. Uh, yeah. Evidently, there are good ways along with it, and it's supposed to be oh. a, a next gen game that's going to be shipping next year. Oh. Don't know if it's going to be Crackdown Three. Hopefully it is, since they already know the Crackdown franchise. Yeah. But even if it isn't, somebody's working on Crackdown 3. Yeah. That's a given. Uh, and then, boom. Uh, Call of Duty Ghosts DLC packs, uh, the names of them have been leaked anyway, uh, which is Onslaught, Devastation, Invasion, and Nemesis. Uh, you put the first letters of those together, and it spells so Odin, good. the name of the massive weapon from the campaign. Mm, clever. Which makes sense. And then, lastly... Assassin's Creed 4 Blackbeard's Wrath DLC leaked. So, uh, that's just pretty much uh, the Blackbeard character from multiplayer, and there's some achievements that go along with it. Yada, yada, uh, yada. And uh, boom. Yeah, so that's the news this week. But we clocked in close to two hours, so it's been a good episode. We lost Kev on the Skype about halfway through, so he'll, 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 he'll catch up with us next episode. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on next time. Peace. Later. Peace. Right. 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 Right.